Okay, let's talk now about marking stencil designs right on your fabric. And of course, this is a time when I would use the washout marker. And this design, especially when you're using a large background design like this, I usually do mark these right on my fabric because the pa quilting paper will s shift just enough that the lines won't stay straight. So this is a time when I use these large stencils which are so nice because they're, you can line them up just perfectly on your quilt block or if you have a larger quilt they're easy to line up with themselves. And so you'd lay this right on your quilt. Now notice I've already basted this and typically when I mark a quilt, it is always after it's basted. It is very easy to mark a quilt before it's basted, and if you already know how you're going to quilt your quilt and you want to mark it prior to basting, that's perfectly fine. The reason that I have always based in mind first is that typically I'm getting quilts from customers that I've never seen before and I have no idea how I'm going to quilt them when I see them. So when I'm going through the basting process, my ideas flow then when I see it laid out on the table and I can see exactly how I want to quilt it and then my ideas are much better and I have more time to think about it. So most of the time my quilts are already basted by the time I'm marking them. Now when you have pins already in the quilt top and you lay a stencil over the top. You don't want to take the pins out. You want to leave them there. And you simply lay this over the top of your design and mark in those channels of the stencil wherever you need to. And if you run into a pin, you mark on either side of it and then you slip your hand underneath and flip the pin over and mark in that spot where it blocked prior to that. And you just keep going and, and mark it just exactly like that and keep on going and then check to make sure you've got all your lines drawn and that you can see everything and then if I'm using a stencil that I've not used before or something that's an intricate pattern I will take the stencil away and I will fill in on my quilt those places where the stencil has has breaks and the reason they have breaks is to hold them together so you need to fill those in to make sure that you know where you're going to stitch next so I have one here that I've already marked and I've already started stitching on I just want to show you what the simple way of quilting a cross hatching design and the nice thing about it is you can just keep on going if you can see where I've stitched and you can just keep going and I went across here outside the quilt and then I kept on going over here and you can actually stitch this entire thing between running over the edge of the quilt and then jumping over here where you're near the star center. So the nice thing about these type of designs is you never have to stop. You can just keep on quilting. It's all continuous. Here's another example of when I've used a background design. This is a finished quilt that I have and this is the stencil that I used in the background of it. When you use designs like this in the background, especially but behind applique, it makes your background recede and your applique pop forward. And so this is another place where I had to use this stencil but I would have had to line it up across the top of this quilt and it, these larger size stencils make that very simple because I can overlap parts that I've already marked and then line that up with the areas of this of this inner border and it just makes life so much simpler to get that background line straight. I just want to show you a continuous line design and sometimes you have to think about things a little bit different to understand how the continuous line works. Every stencil of course is going to be different but this one is a really good example of how you have to think about keeping this continuous. What you see here are a series of hearts and so you think you're going to quilt a heart and then quilt the next heart and then quilt the next heart but that's not how this works. This is a border design and so this is the corner so think about this going all the way around your quilt. And the way you would quilt this to keep going is you would start here or this is one place you could start and come up here and go across the top of this heart do the loop here do the bottom of this heart do the loop here and then do the top of this heart and continue on just like that all the way around the quilt until you come all the way back and then you would end up 
down here, you should be coming from the top of this heart down to here, which is where we started. Then you would have to fill in the bottom of this heart, the top of this heart, the bottom of this heart, and the top of this one, and so on around. So you're actually making two trips around your quilt, but you're never having to stop and cut your threads.